subscribe tag tv youtube channel and press the notification button Good evening. Welcome to South Asia Newsline. I'm Yeshi Chonzo. Here are the top stories we are tracking for you on Wednesday, the 8th of September. Indian and Russian security officials hold talks on Afghanistan crisis deepening bilateral cooperation. Taliban name new Afghan government interior minister on US sanctions list. And Bangladesh prepares to reopen schools colleges from September 12th. And now for all the details. India's national security adviser Ajit Doval and his Russian counterpart Nikolai Petrushev on Wednesday held wide-ranging talks in New Delhi on the situation in Afghanistan following its takeover by the Taliban. Apart from deepening bilateral cooperation in the field of security between the two nations, the duo also held talks on the military, political and socio-economic situation in Afghanistan. India's National Security Advisor Ajit Doval on Wednesday met Secretary of the Security Council of Russia, General Nikolai Petrushev, who is on two-day visit to India. Both the leaders held wide-ranging talks in New Delhi on prevailing situation in Afghanistan following its takeover by the Taliban and its security implications for India, Russia and the Central Asian region. In a statement, the Russian embassy said the duo discussed the military, political and socio-economic situation in the war-ravaged country. They also touched upon humanitarian and migration problems in Afghanistan, as well as prospects for Russian-Indian joint efforts aimed at creating conditions for launching a peaceful settlement process on the basis of an intra-Afghan dialogue. The two top officials also discussed deepening bilateral cooperation in security with an emphasis on further interaction on the anti-terrorist track, combating illegal migration and drug trafficking. The meeting took place a day after Doval held extensive talks with the chief of the Central Intelligence Agency, CIA William Burns, on the Afghan crisis. Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi and Russian President Vladimir Putin had on August 24 discussed the developments in Afghanistan and expressed the view that it was important for the two countries to work together. The U.S. exit from Afghanistan is a security headache for Moscow, which sees former Soviet Central Asia as part of its southern defensive flank and fears the spread of radical Islamism. India has long had concerns about the Taliban because of the group's close ties to the arch-rival Pakistan. India on Tuesday accused Pakistan of promoting a culture of violence and using the high-level UN meeting on the culture of peace for hate speech after Pakistan's envoy wrecked up the issue of Jabu and Kashmir. Indian diplomat Vidisha Mehta said the world should be concerned by terrorists and those who support them in this quest. First Secretary in India's permanent mission to the UN Vidisha Mehta on Tuesday said Pakistan continues to foment a culture of violence at home and across its borders as she hit out at Islamabad for using the platform of the United Nations for hate speech against India. The Indian diplomat said the world should be concerned by terrorists who use religion to justify acts of intolerance and violence and those who support them in this quest. India's strong response came after Islamabad's envoy to the UN, Munir Akram, raked up the issue of Jammu and Kashmir and spoke about the late Kashmiri separatist leader Syed Ali Shah Gilani in his remarks focusing almost entirely on India and not on the forum's theme. We have witnessed yet another attempt today by the delegation of Pakistan to exploit a UN platform for hate speech against India, even as it continues to ferment a culture of violence at home and across its borders. The Muslim-majority region of Kashmir has been at the heart of decades of hostility between India and Pakistan. India has long accused Pakistan supports militancy in the area. Islamabad, however, denies the charges. In news from Afghanistan, 
The Taliban drew from its inner high echelons to fill top post in Afghanistan's new government on Tuesday, including Mohammad Hassan Akun, a man under United Nations sanctions as Prime Minister, and Sirajuddin Haqqani, a wanted man on U.S. terrorism list as Interior Minister. While Taliban's supreme leader has said the government will work towards upholding Sharia law, the United States expressed concern by the track records of some of the cabinet members. Weeks after Taliban took control of Afghanistan in a rapid offensive, the Islamist group drew from its inner high echelons to fill top post in Afghanistan's new caretaker government on Tuesday. Taliban appointed Mohammad Hassan Akund, a close aide to the group's late founder Mullah Omar, as head of the new caretaker government. Akund, a long-time chief of the Taliban's powerful decision-making body, Rahbari Shura, or Leadership Council, is on a United Nations sanction list. Sirajuddin Haqqani, the new interior minister, is the son of the founder of the Haqqani Network, classified as a terrorist group by Washington. He is one of the FBI's most wanted men due to his involvement in suicide attacks and ties with al-Qaeda. Abbas Tanakzai was appointed as the acting deputy foreign minister. Mullah Abdul Ghani Baradar was appointed as Akun's deputy. Taliban spokesman Zebullah Mujahid told a news conference in Kabul. Mullah Muhammad Yaqub, a son of Mullah Omar, was named as defense minister. All the appointments were in acting capacity, Mujahid said. Alhamdulillah, the Jagri Tul Awamil Lamanzalaral. He was the one who 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 was the the United States said it was concerned by the track records of some of the cabinet members and noted that no women had been included. Meanwhile, with the new government in place in Afghanistan, the Taliban Supreme Leader Hibatullah Akhundzada in a statement said that the government will work towards upholding Sharia law. The Taliban leader also asserted that all will take part in strengthening the system and will rebuild the war torn country. In news from Pakistan, Pakistan People's Party Chairman Bilawal Bhutto Zardari has exuded confidence that his party will form the next government in the country as he lashed out at both ruling PTI-led government and political rival PMLN party. The PPP and the PMLN have been at loggerheads since March over indifferences that erupted over choosing the opposition leader in the Senate. PPP, the Pakistan People's Party chairman Bilawal Bhutto Zardari on Tuesday said that no power could stop his party from forming the next government in the centre, as well as in Punjab province, the heart of Prime Minister Imran Khan's ruling PTI-led government. Addressing a convention of party workers in Punjab, Bilawal took a jibe at the economic policies of both the ruling PTI and political rival Pakistan Muslim League Nawaz or PMLN party. He said both the governments had been tailored to pander to the rich and only had anti-poor policies. Meanwhile, Khwaja Asif, a senior leader of PMLN party during a TV show on Tuesday, said it was a mistake on their part to pin hopes on the Pakistan People's Party. The Pakistan People's Party has been at loggerheads with PMLN since March due to indifferences that erupted on the issue of choosing opposition leader in the Senate. Later, PPP also quit from the multi-party opposition alliance Pakistan Democratic Movement due to the rift with PMLN. 
Preparations are currently underway for reopening of educational institutions in Bangladesh from September 12th after the closure of around 18 months due to the COVID-19 pandemic. Schools and colleges across the country have been closed since March last year after health authorities detected the first COVID-19 cases. The Bangladeshi government has announced the reopening of schools and colleges in the country from September 12 after a closure of around 18 months due to the COVID-19 pandemic. Staff members at a school in capital Dhaka were busy with preparing for reopening and some of them painted circles on the ground to follow social distancing norms. Bangladeshi Education Minister Deepu Moni, who made the announcement last week, said that only candidates of public examinations, that is belonging to grades 12, 10 and 5, would attend classes daily after the reopening. Students of other classes would have in-person classes once or twice every week. Schools and colleges across the country have been closed since March last year after health authorities detected the first COVID-19 cases. Later, the closure was extended several times in an effort to contain the spread of COVID-19. Bangladesh has so far reported 1.5 million COVID cases, including 32,367 active cases and 26,684 deaths. So far, the country has inoculated more than 19.61 million people with the first dose of COVID-19 vaccine and more than 8.96 million have received both the doses of the vaccine till September 6. With the annual Ganesh Chaturthi festival set to begin later this week, artisans across India are busy giving final touches to idols of the elephant-headed Hindu Lord Ganesha. An artisan in western Nasik city has carved a unique variety of idols using nails and areca nuts, hoping for good response from buyers. With Ganesh Chaturthi festival just around the corner, an artisan in India's western Nasik city has uniquely carved small idols of elephant-headed Hindu Lord Ganesha made of nails and cassette covers. For the past 22 years, Sanjay Shatriya has been making miniature Ganesha idols and claims that he has prepared over 33,000 idols till now. Among a diverse collection of idols in his shop, he has also made Ganesha idols out of areca nuts. Elaborately painted and decorated idols are worshipped every year across India during the 10-day annual festival which marks the birth of Lord Ganesha, considered the deity of prosperity. Meanwhile, artisans in northern Mohali city are making eco-friendly Ganesha idols ahead of the festival and painting them with organic colors. They hope for good business this time after facing hardships during the pandemic. As part of rituals, hundreds of Ganesha idols made of non-biodegradable materials are immersed in water bodies on the last day of the festival, posing a threat to the environment. However, people are choosing eco-friendly idols this time as celebrations are also bound to be subdued due to COVID-19 restrictions. Two brothers based in Pulwama district of India's Jammu and Kashmir have established a warming compost unit with the government's assistance to generate employment and to promote organic agriculture in the valley. Two brothers based in Pulwama district of India's Jammu and Kashmir territory have established a warming compost unit with the assistance of government to promote organic agriculture in the valley. Bilal Ahmad Sheikh along with his brother Munir Ahmad Sheikh, a postgraduate in the field of biotechnology and a small group of workers create biofertilizers and biopesticides. A former teacher Bilal said the Jammu and Kashmir Agriculture and Horticulture Department provided them technical support for the unit. They also conduct soil testing which has been benefiting the farmers in the region in getting good results in their produce. जो एक कांसेप्ट गवर्नमेंट का आया था लैंड टू लैब का वही कांसेप्ट हम लोगों ने इस पे यूटिलाइज किया है 
तो यहाँ पर हमारी जो लैब है इसमें हम सॉइल टेस्टिंग करते हैं बायो फर्टिलाइजर्स प्रोड्यूस करते हैं और बायो फाइंडिसाइडर्स प्रोड्यूस करते से Currently, the unit employs 15 unit, and the brothers hope to generate employment for more people in the valley, especially in Pulwama district. Well, that's all we have for you from South Asia this evening. Now, our viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianNewsline.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com/AsiaNewsline and follow us on Twitter at AsiaNewsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We will see you same time tomorrow. Good night. Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India.